So sit back, relax, and enjoy some Scooby-Doo. We're good to go. What's up, everybody? My name is Jaxler, and this is Scooby Doo Night of 100 Frights Any Percent. Uh, I've got a bunch of buddies on, uh, with me on the mic. If you want to go ahead and introduce introduce yourselves, like, if I can speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, my name's uh, Nastani, and yeah, I'm just uh, happy to be here. Uh, Jax is the current world, world record holder for the uh, category, and hopefully, we just uh, have a good time here. Hey, I'm Sam. I win this game too. Um... Oh my god, we have such a good one to show you. Like, we've been popping off words left and right for the past few days. Yeah. So this should be good. Hi, I'm Snowy Moogle, and I'm just like super happy to just help show off this game. If you, if you have never seen this game before, it is an absolutely amazing run. And y'all are in it for a good time. All right, so before we start the run, I'd just like to mention a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we're gonna be playing this on the GameCube version of the game. We'll explain why that's the case roughly about uh, like 15 minutes into the run when it becomes relevant. Um, additionally, um, I'm going at the very start of the run, I'm gonna be quiet just for a second so I can listen to an audio cue to know when to skip the first cutscene. Uh, but then from there, we'll be good to go. Uh, this run gets off to a pretty fast start. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talking going on, so I apologize in advance. This game is really, really technical. So I think without further ado, we're ready to go. So I'll count from three, and we'll start time on go, okay? Three, two, one, go. All right. So wait for about the seven-second mark for the sounds. All right, and we're off. So first things first, you're gonna see me collecting a bunch of Scooby snacks here. These are the game's primary collectible. Uh, there's like a bajillion of them scattered throughout this game and they are used to pay for snack toll booth gates that are kind of placed at the end of certain levels as sort of a uh, way to force players to uh, look around and explore. This game is essentially like a 3D Metroidvania type game. So as a result, they try to encourage that exploration. We're gonna be skipping a lot of those uh, toll booth gates throughout the run. However, we have to go out of our way to places such as this level in order to get some extra snacks for later. Um, you're also gonna be seeing me do some uh, charge attack movement, but there's a bit of stuff going on with that that's kind of complicated and a little hard to explain. Um, so, uh, we managed to not drop any snacks here, so that's pretty good. Uh, out with a 57, not too bad of a start. Um, I'm gonna let, uh, Snowy kind of talk about the manor segment coming up here. Okay, so right here, you're actually gonna see Jax. He was talking about the snack gates that we have to pay. He's gonna pay the first one right here, just a quick 25 snack gate, but they will cost a lot more later on. And additionally, what Jax was talking about, we're gonna be going out of our way a lot in levels. So our paths through the levels aren't necessarily the absolute fastest, but a combination of going fast and getting a lot of the fast snacks. And right here you're going to see Jax do what's called Chandelier Jump. And you're normally not intent to get on that chandelier right away, but the pre precise jump he can do it. In addition, he's going to be jumping off some invisible ledges on these canvases, giving him access to a bunch more snacks right here. That is a very clean Yeah, manner. it's like a 41. That's pretty good. <sighs> Alright. So the whole reason that we went inside there was to go talk to Holly. She gives us a map that we can go use to uh, use these work gates that you'll see later, um, as well as it's required to get that shovel so we can go into the first major wing of the game, Smuggler's Cove. Uh, in this game, there's kind of like three major like areas of the map. There's uh, Smuggler's Cove, that manor you saw, and some hedge maze areas that you'll see later. Um, we're going to be going through to Smuggler's Cove because at the start of the run, we need the first major Metroidvania upgrade double jump. Now, uh, this level is kind of like the start of a bunch of like cycle based uh, components to levels so there's going to be some enemies moving around here I tried to time my charges effectively so I could grab those two snacks right there and get a charge off right here and be in a good enough position so those rats and those uh, flying fish monsters start in the same position when you load the level and move consistently uh, from then on so as a result if you go fast enough you can make the same cycle every time uh, does someone want to talk about rubber band skip 
So, um, in this level, or in this game, you have to save, save Shaggy a number of times, however, because this is a speedrun, we don't do that, so we're going to skip saving Shaggy here. Um, so what Jax is going to do, he's going to collect all these snacks, and then he's going to charge into that corner and jump on the box, and the game cooperates, there we go. So, that, is, that skips having to put Shaggy on that life preserver and swing off his legs onto the box. Um, we don't say Shaggy at any point in this room. It's funny because it's supposed to be a main component of the levels. We'll encounter him three times, we don't save him any of them. Yeah. You're good, we don't need you here. Uh, so this is a relatively straightforward bit here, uh, through the tier two. This is just kind of a connected level that you're normally supposed to, like, come through again later as well. And there's a lot more to this level, but I'm going to try to go for something here called Car Strat. So let's see if I can hit it. Oh, we got the early frame! Let's go, dude! <laughs> So there, there, what happened there is uh, normally the sticky tar prevents you from running fast as well as jumping, but upon loading into the level, there's a two frame window in which you can input a jump and reach that barrel to get a free snack box. So uh, the consequences of me doing that aren't going to be super apparent until much later on, but hitting that in a marathon and uh, hitting the first frame actually gives you less height too. So that was insane. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I so mean, recently, recently go ahead. we implemented a metronome for that strat, so it was easier to time. Um, because the tar is very slow, as you can tell, like Scooby's movement speed is really slowed down by it, and you can't even run or jump. So skipping the tar does save a lot of seconds. Yeah. Yeah, and even if you like miss that like don't jump, like even if you just get over there. You still save time because you, you you're not slowed down by the tar. And essentially here we're gonna be uh, he's gonna collect some time and he's gonna jump up against the key to get to the door and then we're gonna go into hedge. Now there's four levels to hedge, but we're only gonna go through uh three of them. Uh, skipping this door. And so right now you're just gonna see him go through this level and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Fast, and that was a, a go to hedge one, as we like to say. Here comes hedge two, though. Hedge two <laughs> is the most interesting part of the hedge, which is uh, a lot of things. Uh, he's about to on each cycle, which is basically just him trying to jump on Never. the rest of the ledge on this wall. He did not get it, unfortunately. But it's a super fun. inconsistent jump. Yeah, it's, it's not consistent at all. So he, uh, right now, we're about to see him go uh, and get to it. In this case, uh, <laughs> Your first try? First try, let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really hard, hard jump to make, but uh, once you get a piece of it, it's like very nice. And you save uh, a bit more from the other strat, which is just jumping at flower jump. Yeah, one. you're not supposed to be in this area until you get the first boss's Metroidvania upgrade with Roshes. Um, but by doing that jump there or an alternative strat right over here called Flower Jump, you can actually get those snacks for free. And again, like Snowy said, it seems like we're kind of going out of our way. That was all sus. Um, but like these snacks are going to be super necessary for later. Yeah, because you have a lot of like snack gates to pay that are like 400, like, and like 850, and another snack gate. <laughs> and essentially, you're gonna see him just like take up some snacks here and just pretty much collect as much snacks as possible. And the reason that we collect all of these snacks here is because they're all like very close together, and you know, it's just fast to pick them up, right? And right now, you're gonna see the first uh, major like uh, clip, uh, clip of the game where he's gonna try to uh, clip the game and skip, and, like, skip uh, all of Hedge for. It's like a 720. That's pretty good. <laughs> So what Jack skipped there was a uh, was a like a really long auto scroller with Shaggy, another Shaggy skip, um, and he also skipped um, the first two Chills and Spills levels and Greenhouse levels. Um, not only does that 
just going through these levels save on snacks because there's snack gates there but it also saves you going through five levels when you go through the OP. yeah and like like sam said the auto scroller is like super duper slow there's like ways to speed it up but it's like it's really sad so yeah, it's funny <laughs> we're doing this lot the level he was just in uh misbehaving part one is like not a play if you're playing this game casually you don't get there until at least like an hour or two in uh, but we do this big skip just because it just so happens going through these levels skull cliff backwards happens to be faster than the casual route yeah. so we're actually getting to like where exactly you'd want to be in a casual route like in the next couple minutes exactly so right here I do another slope jump to get up to these snacks, and then if I go fast enough here, I should pretty uh, consistently make this platform right here. That saves about roughly 15 seconds or so. Um, so now we're chilling here, grab a couple of snacks, and my work isn't over yet. I'm trying to make a really tight cycle at the end of the run here, or the, the uh, well, the stretch of level, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> there's a, a falling platform that I'm trying to meet at the end that will let me skip a little bit of a run around at the end of the level here, which kind of makes it hard to pass through otherwise. Something you'll also notice here is that I'm making what looks like a lot of leaps of faith. The game's camera angles, as in all the quest levels, kind of assume that you're coming from the opposite direction since we're technically going to okay grab the uh, so as a result like you have to practice a lot here because if you don't know where you're going uh you'll just pretty much all the time fall to your death it's pretty rough so got through here a little bit slow but we still need the cycle so that's fine oh it's worth pointing out that this game doesn't have a free camera that the camera is fixed and, and that makes it difficult to go through the levels not in their intended way like here it, um, uh, like you have to be, you have to know when the platform's coming because otherwise you could just easily just jump into the void. Exactly. So I went for a bit of uh, baby strats right there. There's a bit more of a difficult route you can do right there, but if you miss it, you get to, it costs like ten seconds and it does. You have to um, to make up for it. So I decided not to go for it. Um, but and death works mainly just dying. Yeah. Wherever and that resets the cycle. Yeah. For some level, you don't uh, die. Like, if you die, you don't suffer all of that keep you all the time. Like in uh, the previous level, you don't go all of the time in that level, right? You don't go halfway. So you have some forgiving spots, but you can kind of die in a second. You're barely making the cycle at the end yeah. of the skull. Uh, That's a very tight cycle. I'm going to level, though, while I try to set up for it. I'll go for ladder, for sure. Flex is going to do uh, summer early here, which is just skipping, having to wait for the platform to come back by using that invisible collision on that wall. And then he's going to go, then he's going to climb up the level using his wooden planks. I should and probably delete that gold. The level with the helmet. He also skips a cutscene there. Yeah. So right so, there, the I actually did a bit of a manip where I actually jumped in a very specific way to make that zombie like super spooked, like holy crap, Scooby jumped. And that causes him to like not move as soon, which allows me to scoot right by without actually taking damage. That allows me to set up a charge around the rock so that I can avoid taking a hit to the head. And then we're good to go here. Um, so yeah, at the top of this hill is the next Metroidvania upgrade. That's the whole reason we came all the way out here in the first place was to get this helmet so we can hit buttons, deal damage to enemies. It's necessary in order to beat the game. Uh, but then after this, I'm going to take a death warp uh, to put ourselves close to the warp gate to exit this level. And then I'm going to let Snowy take over because we're going into a very, very long stretch of difficult levels. Uh, if you didn't think this was already tricky enough. Uh, uh, so actually, if you play it, so, oh, oh, so uh, it's Scooby does an animation after getting a, a power up. But uh, normally after you get the helmet, you're supposed to go through the manor. It's a super long section of the game to get a power up to get into fishy clues. The next like section after that. Uh, but it turns out the invisible wall they put to block you off of fishy clues is just low enough that you can jump over it. And that's about a third of the game just skipped right there. And Fishy Clues, Fishy 1 is actually like one of the hardest like individual levels in the entire run. These conveyor belts, the, these conveyor belts are really hard to control Scooby on and they take a lot of practice. Again, what Nastani was talking about earlier, uh, conserving Scooby's momentum by doing very precise jumps on these platforms that are like moving Scooby around. There's a lot of that. There's trying to get as many snacks as possible. And that was actually an amazing- That was a sub 40, that's one. really good. <laughs> 
And now, uh, Fishy 2 is one of my favorite levels in the game, because it, theory essentially, it is an auto-scroller, but at the same time, because the cycles are pretty generous, Jax will basically, like, his time through this level individual would be almost the same every time, but he has to be very fast here, because he wants to get as many snacks as possible. Because when you miss snacks in the run, it means you'll have to get slower snacks later on. So, Fishy 2 is interesting where it's a level you're never gonna directly lose or save time on, but maybe depending on how many, like, extra or extra snacks you get or extra snacks you lose, you might save or lose time later on. And so it's really- so you see, like, yeah, there's a platform- he could have, uh, gotten the, uh, an extra snack there on the platform on the right. Yeah, but it's I not a huge deal. Yeah, just beat Digital by hitting the crab, so... It's little things like that that cause you to blue time loss throughout the run, even though you won't see it on the block, per se, if you're looking at the splits right now. Yeah. Is there, it's like, if you don't lose any time, per se, because you still have a cycle on this platform going up, but you didn't lose that one right? That's a, a common thing with these levels, that you might not lose on time, because they are kind of hard to play, or like, drop the ball when you lose the time, and it's not counting. So, so uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so I know Jax has like in mind the snacks he does want to get throughout the run, but if he is missing snacks, he will be like checking his snack total at certain points in the run to see uh, which snacks. Like if he's down some snacks, what potential slower snacks he might have to get later on, or maybe he's a uh, very ahead on snacks, which he actually is right now. He has a very good snack yeah, total. Even with doing like the the worst route in uh, history, which is kind of insane. So he could, like, potentially skip some of the slower snacks later on. And that kind of type of knowledge, knowing which snacks are slower and faster, is something that's really fun with this game. Just the snack routing in general, knowing which snacks are slower and faster and how good your snack collecting is, and like, the on-the-fly routing is just such an interesting part of running this game. Yeah, so right there, I'm kind of looking at my snack count. I, I was at uh, uh, 1,015, which is basically perfect. So if I play my cards right and don't miss too many more snacks, we're pretty much good to go. So that's pretty sick. Yeah, um, so this level's already passed, but you may notice that, that Jax got onto that Fishing 3 platform pretty early. Like, if you play the game and you usually have to wait, but if you hold a straight left angle, then you can get to that platform pretty quick, and then you can jump on an invisible barrier separating the two parts of the level, meaning that you don't have to wait for the slow platforms and go around. That saves about 30 seconds if you do it properly, compared to just going around the other way. Yeah, he just did like a little skip there where he just like jumped over the car since like obviously you can't jump on the car so that's why he jumped uh, like, on the walkway so no, the coast levels these are actually like some of the hardest and most punishing levels in the entire run yeah. he's gonna be i'm gonna be quiet for a sec for the cutscene skip oh i, I had it I just barely chose uh, it. That's fine. Cutscene. Yeah, the, the hitbox for triggering the cutscene is a lot higher than you might think. And so you have to do a very precise jump to skip over it. And unfortunately, like, hitting the cutscene is like 10 ish seconds right there. Yeah. And essentially, skipping the cutscene, there's two ways to do it. There's the coward way, as I like to call it, where you just run off and die. Um, and then there's the other way where you uh, either jump onto the pole or over the pole, at, like at that intersection. Um, but you may have noticed that he actually fell through the pole and that's a not very fun feature about that pole. Like, you can just sometimes fall through the pole. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Things me. get ruined. And then if you try to go just like swing over the pole without even jumping on it, uh, you can also just like... Uh, one thing we didn't mention is when Scooby is charging, his hitbox is extremely narrow, and you're gonna see Jax really take advantage of it right here. So Scooby's hitbox is so narrow, he can't get hit. So you're noticing Jax is like scooting by all these enemies right here, and he is not taking any damage, and that's allowing him to make a very tight cycle there. So basically, charge movement in this game is if Scooby's head hits the enemy, it counts as a hit, which will play like a bonk animation, and you don't want that, it's slow. So you basically want to make sure Scooby's head doesn't hit the enemy and you move around them. And it's a really interesting thing with movement, where again, like, uh, you basically can't get hit. So just make sure Scooby doesn't actually attack them and you're good to go. Alright, uh, someone want to explain coast boats? 
so what Jax is going to do is he's going to get all these snacks and once he's done that he's going to take damage from a fish and he's going to abuse Scooby's iframes so he can walk on water and beat Scooby Jesus and then he, and then he can uh, and so then he's going to get get these fast snacks here and um, and then uh, because then he's going to use going to go back but Jax is on 1.1, meaning that there's no invisible fish net here, so he's going to swing on that net instead. And he got it. Good. There, there is certain versions of the game where there is a little bag like out on like the water, which you can jump on, and essentially you just have to pretty much just. Jump on. It's, it's, only, it's only like a, a two second. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you have a game, if, if you want to know which version of the game you have, and you have no idea, then going into that level and testing if there's an invisible net there is one of the ways to check if you have 1.0 or not. And in this level, this is the uh, high pass. So essentially, you can see him like what Snowy was talking about earlier with the uh, box, where he's gonna go up this giant staircase. Then you can only skip this in those snap boxes until you get the power up. Yeah. So the whole reason we went through here was to go get uh, the Super Smash, which we need to go access the final bit of the game. Um, even like there, like we need it in order to deal damage to the final boss. That's kind of the theme of this run: is we get the necessary Metroidvania upgrades to beat the game, and then we just kind of dip, and then we go beat the game. <laughs> Yeah, so we actually do have, yeah, like Jack said, we have everything we need to beat the final boss now, and that's what he's about to go do. Yeah, so this is just kind of cool movement. This is actually kind of a newer route that uh, came into effect a couple, like, a couple months ago, I'd say. So instead of going around this bend to grab snacks, we're going to be taking this door in a different warp grade to grab some extra snacks. So just a kind of a small little thing. Um, but as we're making our way to the creepy levels, um, Nordic, you probably have time for like one quick message real quick. If you got something. I've got a quick one indeed. Dr. Corporal British sends us $10, says, Hey, Jaxler, you just got world record in any percent. Are you not satisfied? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brett. I love you, homie. All right. Uh, whoever wants to talk about Creepy One, go ahead. I'll be quiet. All right. So uh, essentially, Creepy One, uh, you're going to see him get a couple of these snack boxes. Because right now, he is racing to get and essentially, I was going to see that it just went down to like a little bit of there, and there was a snap box there, and you could either hit the invisible lights there, or get hit by the bats flying in the air, and then use your eye to pick up that box. And essentially, you're going to watch him uh, jump over, like, part of this level, a little time today, where you don't go all the way around, he just jumps the top. And that level up is actually relatively hard to get, because you have to do basically two, two full matches, and then also smash to make it back on the ledge. And I don't know. Anyone casually would find the the invisible like snack box. Yeah. In QB1. There is a percentage counter that tells you, but so right here, what I'm doing is these keys over the cauldrons actually have a bigger hitbox than the bubbles that can actually damage you. So as a result, if I abuse Scooby's jump hitbox properly, I can actually just get through there just fine without any issues. All right, here comes the gauntlet. Go ahead, whoever wants to. Uh. So. Okay. So. What. Jax is doing now, he's skipping Shaggy again. He's not gonna save him from the jail cell, he's just gonna use invisible walls on the on the invisible Ooh, walls. And then he used another invisible wall trick to to skip the red beard fight because you usually need the gum and then the soap, but we don't need that because we're speedrunning. Oh, and then now he's doing GTS. So he's so he's skipping skipping the green ghost fight by using invisible walls on there. That's good setting the umbrella, which you'd usually need to float up here. 
So essentially, uh, in the last 30 seconds, Jack skipped both the second and the third boss with just a few invisible ledges. That's why I had to speak like a rat dog. Because, <laughs> oh my god. Because... And essentially, it... those are the two hardest skips in the game. Uh, seen by pretty much everyone in the community. Because he just, uh, the third ledge that you see him jump on is uh, highly inconsistent most of the time. And so is Arbia. We actually saw him in the first try and he made second snacks. Like, well, which is uh, seen as very good. And now he has 850 snacks, which is the amount that he needs to do this final snack gate. And right now he's going to do something called Lido Skip, which is there's two ledges that you can jump on. And uh, then he jumps on the, uh, like, the wall and then he like, gets up to the bridge fast instead of having to, like, you know, do the whole, like, uh, like shut off the, like, What's it called? The slime or whatever? Scooby, yeah. This shark has a bigger so here, um, we're going to skip saving Shaggy from the shark because there, saving Shaggy is always slow. So legs, what pal. Jax is going to do, he's going to run up at the wall and he's going to go into a very specific angle and he's going to jump oh, through oh, the door. Raggy. And that skips having to press those buttons to save Shaggy and get Shaggy out of the tank. So slow. And then essentially he has some more acid here, so essentially what he's going to do is he's going to jump on a platform, and then he's going to jump all the way to the other side Ready? of the Ready? room. And then you're going to see him after a couple of cups he's going to skip them just by pressing A. And then essentially he's going to clip through the wall here. Um, and essentially this is just to get to the mastermind fight faster. Now he's now he's gonna yeah, this gives like the first phase. Yeah. He's gonna have to kill all the enemies here so that the electricity dies around those buttons so he can uh, keep hitting them and like uh, advance the fight further. Yeah, so we, we actually skip having to activate the boss music here, so we're just going with the normal main theme of the game instead of made for boss music that you barely ever hear in speed rooms unless you accidentally activate it. You can accidentally go in the corner and trigger the cutscene and you'll lose like 5, 10 ish seconds. But you get to hear some really nice music. Alright, so time is coming up soon. So, what I need to do is ground pound the boss to stun him. And then I repeatedly helmet bash him into the electricity. And time ends when he collides with the lightning in the back. So, we're waiting for him to spawn. He can spawn in a bunch of different places. And of course, I get one hit. That's actually absurd. Alright, get ready on time. And time. Wow. Okay. That is. Amazing. I on my end, I have a twenty-five seventeen. That is absurd. That, that, that is, is amazing. That That's is only twenty-five off my TV that, for a marathon. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that's absurd. <laughs> so that yeah, that's it. That's gonna be out of hundred frights, everyone. Um, that was beyond ridiculously good for a marathon Look, game. Gang, there he is. Thank you so much to Calithon for yeah. having us. Uh, this was a lot of fun to now do. It's time to get to the bottom. Uh, of big shout outs to everyone on the mic with me for making this a whole bunch of fun. Really is. Uh, <laughs> Wait, Fred. Yeah. Like, so uh, now we get to see who the really is. culprit behind the Scooby Doo mystery keeper, that we ended right? up skipping was. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't Don Nuts, the, uh, the groundskeeper. Uh, there's, there's a, for some reason, a star-studded cast on this uh, what do you people game's have uh, the voice cast. So we got Don Nuts, the groundskeeper, with absolutely no neck, and Tim Curry as the mastermind, believe it or not. Incredibly epic. Um, before I go into Shadow so, uh anything uh, you three want to say before I go into words? So please play this game casually to listen to Don Knotts' lines. Like, it's not just this cutscene, he will say lines in the levels as well, they're great. We have a large entire Discord speedrun community that you can join if you're interested in speedrun in this game. Like, the, like, the state tutorials is most of the people in the Discord really? to help you if you want to try and speedrun this game. It's, it's very accessible, I would say. Oh, me? Yeah, and essentially, if you want to just see more of this game, in Uncle general, Alexander, a lot of us I don't believe so it. Hit the Night of 100 Parts category. I knew it all the time. <laughs> Something just doesn't add up. This game has also been like extremely active recently. Yeah. With this, I think um, nine out of the top ten runners have PB'd in the past like two months. Wow. So th this game has been popping off. Yeah. And it's super Holly, easy to get into, super accessible. There? Um. 
I want to especially shout out my boy Harsh, who is not only just an amazing human being, he also made a really excellent tutorial for the no ggs category which is sort of the beginner route that doesn't do that really hard skip in the giant fan room that you saw me do with all those slope jumps um so if you're worried about some of the stuff i did i was like oh that looks way too hard don't worry about it there's, there's a lot of ways to route things out and there's a lot of flexibility and it's really really easy to get into and i noticed how she passed through that rail near the secret lab into like it's pretty easy by setting up a hologram of herself when the mastermind was around she'd have the Perfect alibi. Do, so it really rewards, but what like, I don't get is how she got the yeah. professor here. You're, you're and if you're not in a mastermind so costume, no less. <laughs> yeah, if you're not well, interested in any percent, she used my patent pending, dressed for supper, suck you well. up. I spent but, so much time like, this game is more than anything. 100% into the front door in seconds. Uh, before <laughs> we get into the greatest the credits bop of all time, uh, the, which hopefully uh, we don't get uh, kicked out exactly. before then, um, really? I'd like to shout out a couple more people. Um, Holly, big shout out to Baz. Uh, Baz is like one of the godfathers of this game and is kind of responsible for getting us all together on this. So, huge shout out to my boy Baz. Again, shout outs to Harsh. Shout outs to everyone in the Scooby community in general. You all are just the greatest um, and your great <laughs> <episodes> <laughs> and really um, so oh, yeah why, go ahead Holly? why go through now, all of this it, it's just really you guys amazing how like this uncle. game went and when he was sent to jail active, i'd like, steal his super two years ago 2020 and claim i came up with it by yeah so I would have like, made a fortune right, there's too. There's been three new words in the mm -hmm. past 24 hours. It was a good plan. Yeah, literally in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And I would have gotten away with it too. Which is like a huge Not milestone for community. Kids so. And your pesky yeah, dog. Yeah. So. I get unless any. Uh, I guess I should probably yeah, preface professor, this. Let me help so you. for whatever reason, this well, game has the greatest credits bop of all paid. time. I like to jokingly call it Scoob Step well, and listen to it whenever I finish start. a run. So if it's cool hey. with the marathon stuff, I know we're a little bit ahead, but if you need to cut me off, that's totally fine. Um, I like uh, to take a moment uh, to listen to the credits music for a bit. It's about like a minute or two. Long, so everyone in chat, get your dance emotes, whatever you have ready, because this is just quality content. Right here. And here Did we go. Out, chat? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> We're good? Okay, great. Alright, I'm gonna be quiet and just sit back and relax. Can we get a uh, shout out to the lead tester, Eric? Eric Hernandez and all the other testers, poor thing. Shout out to my boy Razmik the Bug Killer, who had the audacity to nickname himself the Bug Killer in the comment in, in the credits, but you can beat the game in probably under 20 minutes once we have one creepy early, so. Oops. <laughs> Z ball a shot call is also good. <laughs> Did you ever notice? Dude, no, I was, I was, Brian, Brian always knew that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, you also got Buck Boy on guitar, which is also good. Come on, Buck Boy. <laughs> That's Buck Boy. He made some pretty cool tunes for this game. And you don't hear any of them in this one. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we skipped all of them. <laughs> Rasmic yet, or is that in the next verse? Oh, no, um, we've, we've gone past him. Ah, <laughs> yeah, thank you all, by the way, and thank you again to Cali Thorn. Yeah, see, there's Tim Curry. I wasn't lying to you, he is credited in this game. Um, yeah, so like, everyone, everyone you knew from those like cool 90s movie movies, they just hired all those voice actors to do all the voices again. Yeah, it's actually pretty sick. And yeah, like we said, please play this game casually. This game is actually made by the same people who made Battle for Bikini Bottom and like the movie game. Uh, this this was their project before they did that. So if, if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. Um, but yeah, we've come to the end of the scoop step, unfortunately. I hope you, 
I hope you enjoyed the Velma bass drop. Um, that's about all the time we've got. Um, I believe coming up next we have uh, Lori back on the on stage with Pack Number Two. Um, so at this point, we're going to toss it back over to the Calathon staff. Again, thank you so much, everyone, for having us as a part of this. It was really a great opportunity to get to show this game off. So uh, I've been Jaxler. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon and keep donating, everybody. Take it easy.